For this exercise, you're going to be creating a customized font from hand-drawn elements. And once this font is created, you're going to use the lettering in your project's poster. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is test a variety of media. I've got smooth and rough paper, paintbrushes, markers, and pencils. Next, test each media by drawing some lines and shapes to see how they react to the different surfaces. This should give you a good idea of the details within their texture profile. I like the way the marker looked on the watercolor paper, so I used it to draw off a variety of shapes and lines. To scan an image, first make sure the scanner is connected to your computer through the USB drive. Then open up Photoshop. Photoshop is the best software to use to digitize a scanned image. It also has the ability to, to connect directly to the scanner that we have. So with it open, we can go to File, down to Import, and choose Images from Device. This will let you select the uh, scanner that we're using. In our case, it's the Epson Perfection V19. And when you click on Overview, this will give us a quick overview scan of everything that's on the scanner bed. This may take just a second, but once it's done, you get an idea of the area that we're scanning. Now once it does finish, it'll attempt to select different areas or try to pick out different objects that are on here. In my case, it recognized this center little circle. If this happens to you, simply select these areas and click the delete key to get rid of them. Instead of doing just part of it, we want to select and scan everything that's on the image bed. So with all of those deleted away, click on the top left hand corner and drag down to the bottom right. And now we can scan all of this. Also, make sure create new Photoshop document is selected at the bottom left. And as far as the image details go, we're going to scan as a color document. Keep the resolution nice and high, so at least 300 or more. As far as where we're going to scan this to, I've selected the desktop to make it much easier to find. And as far as the name goes, I've added my name to the word scan at the end of this. The more we scan, it'll start adding a number to those. I keep the format as a simple JPEG, and everything else will remain none. Once we're finished, you can hit scan and this will go through a more detailed scan. Now that it's done scanning, it automatically loads it up into Photoshop as its own document. The last thing we need to do is to maybe crop out any unwanted areas. You can do this by selecting the Crop tool, then you can click and drag the edges till it crops in and gets rid of the unnecessary parts. Just be careful not to crop out any of the circles or areas that we definitely want to keep. I'll hit return, and there we are, good for that one. Once we're done with this, we can go back up to File, and let's save it. We'll keep our JPEG options as far as the quality nice and high. We'll say OK to that. And then repeat this process for any other pages or areas that you need to scan off. Do this until you've got all the shapes completely done. Now that I've finished scanning, I've got the four different scans that I can place in a folder with my name on it. I've already got a folder that has this exercise name, so I'll select these, place them in here, and let's move on to the next portion. Before we set up our Illustrator document, make sure you've downloaded the Alphabet and Shape Template JPEG, and let's place both of these inside of our custom Alphabet folder that's inside of our folder with your name on it. Now let's jump into Illustrator. We'll go up to File and create a new document. And the size of our document needs to be tabloid. So let's choose Print, then Tabloid. As far as the units of measure go, we'll save that to inches. So make sure Portrait Orientation is selected. And we want to have two artboards. We'll hit Create. And this will give us our two different artboards. And we want to place each of those JPEG templates into each of the different artboards that we have. I've opened up my layers panel. I'm going to drag it off so I can see it. Then we can go to File, down to Place, and let's locate each of those two JPEGs. The first one we want to load up is the Shape Template. So with Shape Template selected, make sure Template is turned on under the Options. And if you don't see these options, you can click on the word Options and bring it up. 
then choose place. By default, this will always place it in the center of your screen, not necessarily in the center of our artboard. So in our case, let's go back to our layers and unlock the new template layer. So we can drag it to be centered nice and evenly inside of this artboard. Once that's done, let's go back and lock down that layer. I'm going to select layer one again. Let's go over to this artboard, then back to file and place. Now we can load up the alphabet template. Again, make sure template is selected and do place. And if it's not centered inside of the artboard, you can go to your layers and let's undo this one and then move it over till it's nice and centered inside of this area. These template layers will allow us to see the different shapes and the different letters, but we don't want to uh, necessarily edit or change them up. So they're nice and tinted and they're also locked down. All of our other stuff is going to be done in layer one. For now, we're going to work on importing the shapes. First, we need to save up our documents. So let's go to File and Save. And I'm going to call this Custom Alphabet. And make sure to put your name on it. Do make sure you're saving it inside of the folder with your name on it. And we're going to keep it as an Illustrator document for now. We'll hit Save and say OK to the Illustrator options. Now let's vectorize the scanned images that we created. I'm going to move off of my artboard to the left hand side and work in this gray area. We'll go to File, down to Place, and locate any of the scans that you want. We're going to work on these one at a time. With them selected, make sure Link, Template, and Import Options is unchecked. We just want to hit Place and place our object here. Now it's going to follow your cursor until you click and drag and that will place it off to this area. To vectorize this rasterized image, with it still selected, you can go to Image Trace at the very top, click once. This may give you a warning dialog box. We can say OK to that. And this is going to look for the light and dark areas of the image you have selected. And it does a pretty good job of picking up on all the details. To further refine this, you can locate this icon at the top left hand corner of your options. Clicking on it will open up your image trace options. Do make sure you're working in black and white mode. We don't want to add color or grayscale to this particular exercise. And the first thing to play around with would be your threshold. If you decrease your threshold, this is going to pick up on some lighter areas and would actually pick up on more of the texture of our paper. So it would look something like this. If you increase your threshold, this will pick up on the darker areas and they'll get a lot more details in the shapes that we've drawn off. So playing around with that will give you some different results. I want something that has a little bit of texture, but I want some nice uh, smooth shapes. So maybe I'll bring it down just a little bit more. And yeah, I kind of like that particular look for this, uh, this image. The other options can be found under the advanced drop down menu. Normally I don't play around with the paths or the noise, but those can give you some different results. But one option I do want to select is to ignore white. With this option turned on, this will treat the white areas as completely transparent, and this will make it much easier to select the darker shapes that we have. Once you've got everything that you like, I can close out my image trace panel for now. And we need to be able to select each one of these individual shapes that we've drawn. Now, when you do an image tracing, Illustrator is going to treat this kind of as a special object, and they're all grouped together. The first thing we need to do is, with it selected, click on the Expand option in the top center of your toolbox, and this will break it apart into uh, individual vector shapes. And here you can see the actual outlines of our objects. Once it does this, it also groups them. So let's go to Object and Ungroup so that now I can deselect them and click on the individual shapes and move those around. Now do be careful, when you ungroup this, it's going to ungroup everything and it's going to treat each individual black shape as its own separate shape. Some of these shapes I may actually want to keep together. So let me zoom in and I'll show you this one. So for instance, this particular circle, if I was to move it, it's treating this little extra bit as its own individual shape. Same way with this spiral. This center part of the spiral is being treated as its own shape as well. 
So if this is happening to you, you may want to go through with your black arrow, carefully select all of the shapes at once, then go back up to Object and group those together because we want to treat these as individual groups. So take some time to locate those and select those. Here's another one that's treating these as two separate shapes. What I want to do is to go and select both of them and group both of those together and treat those as one in individual shape. Let's back out now. Once you've got all of those done, then it's a simple matter of selecting the individual shapes and dragging them back over and uh, classifying them onto your template area. So I'm going to choose all of the filled in circles or dots that I have and keep those together. So I'll keep this one, that one looks good. You don't have to keep all of them. The main idea is to give yourself a good variety to pick and choose from. Some of these look better than others. So here's a variety of different dots. I really like this one, how that one turned out. For now, it's not going to matter about the size of it, but it does matter that I have a good variety to pick and choose from. Let's see, these two look about the same, so I'm going to get rid of that one, but I do like this one. I'm going to keep this one in here. Let's get maybe get a couple of more. I like some of these spirals, so I'll keep those as options. Here's another good spiral. And if they overlap each other, that's okay too. And then do the same thing for some of our open circles that we have. Once you get all of the shapes from this particular scan that you want to keep, we can go back to our leftover scan pieces, and with our black arrow, click and drag over all of these extra ones and hit delete to delete them away. Just make sure you don't accidentally select any of the ones that you want to have kept. Then we can repeat the process for another scan. Let's go up to File and Place, choose another scanned image, make sure nothing is checked on, hit Place, place it by clicking and dragging, then you can choose Image Trace, say OK to this warning. Once it vectorizes it, you can open up your Image Trace options, play around with these different options, do remember to turn on Ignore White. This will get rid of the white, and once you're finished with this, make sure to hit Expand, and this will break it up into its individual vector parts. Once you click Expand, go to Object, let's ungroup it, and then you can go back in and reselect the individual groups that you do want to have grouped together. So we'll go to Object and group it Command-G. Then it's simply a matter of selecting the parts that you want to keep and placing them in the order of your shapes template. Repeat this process for all of the different shapes, and then once we have our collection, we can move on to creating our custom alphabet letters. Once you've finished, you should have a large variety of shapes to pull from, and you can use some of these shapes more often than others. That's totally okay. Now we can jump into creating our custom alphabet. If you look on the right side of our document, this is where our custom template should be. I've given you an idea of what each of the letters should look like. Now your letters don't necessarily have to be sans serif like the example that I'm giving you. It can be calligraphic, it can be a serifed image, as long as the letter is readable as that character, that's what we're looking for. Additionally, you don't have to be stuck with just an uppercase letter. You can use lowercase letters, but for this particular exercise I'm only looking for the uppercase letters to be created. Let's jump in and create the first letter. The letter A is obviously made up of some straight shapes, so if we go over to our shapes to use, the first thing to keep in mind is we don't want to destroy or to use up any of these lines. We always want to make a copy of them. So as you select a line to use, either do Command C and V to do a copy and paste, or hold down your Option key as you click and drag to drag them onto here. Let me drag a couple of these just to have them on hand so that I can quickly and easily use those. Also, since the letter A has kind of a triangular top to it, maybe I can use one of these D shapes and customize it. We'll zoom in a little bit more. Again, I'm only using my Move tool, and let me show you how quickly we can create a shape with this one. I can drag and rescale and rotate this and place that there. And so let's place one over here. 
it's okay to stretch these out if necessary. And let's use this to change up the angle. And maybe we'll place this one off to this particular side, make this one a little bit smaller. Actually, let's do this. I'm gonna make a copy of that one and place this one off to one side here. So there is one example of a quick A that can be created. Let's see if we can do another one just to give us some options to choose from. I'll make a copy of this leg and drag it up. Maybe for this one, we'll want to have one side be much thicker and the other side to be nice and thin. And as far as the swash going across it, we'll use this kind of rounded swash. So here's an option for an A as well. And this one has a little bit more personality with the swash going through. So very easily, very quickly, I can create some of these and pull them together using some of my existing shapes. Once I've got a letter that I like, we need to select both of the lines or all of the lines, go up to Object, and let's group it together. So there's the grouping for this particular letter A. Let's do the letter B together. The B is made up of a straight line, and then you've got the two different humps. And I've got a variety of options to pull from this one. Of course, I could choose one of the straight lines down here, so I'll copy this one. Let's place it, paste it into place. I can use one of the open-faced or the, the half circles for the top of the B and place that up here. Or I could use one of my little circles up here and make a copy of it and place them down at the bottom of the B. If I like that or not, that's okay. I can just play around until I get something that I necessarily do like. Maybe I don't like that one. Let's copy over one of our closed face circles. That's looking pretty good as far as a B goes. Again, once you get the letter that you like, go up to Object and group all of those different shapes together to keep it that particular letter. If you ever do need to go back and make edits to something, you can go to Object and ungroup them. Let's say I wanted to make this one slightly smaller. That looks like a more, more robust B. Some other transformations that you can make to an object. Let's say I wanted to have this particular shape for the C. So I drag it on. Of course, you can rotate the image and stretch it out. If I ever need to reset the bounding box, notice that the bounding box always keeps whatever angle that I rotate it to. But it would be helpful if I can reset it to, so that it's um, vertical and horizontal. With it selected, hold down the control button, click on the image. Under transform, at the very bottom, you can choose to reset the bounding box. And this will reset it to its uh, perpendicular and parallel lines. The other kind of transformations you can do with it selected is to hold down control, choose transform, and you can reflect the image. Reflecting this image will bring up our reflect dialog box and you can turn on preview. And this way we can reflect it either vertically or horizontally. And sometimes you may want to do those as well. So we'll say okay to that and this will bring it around this particular way. So if I like my C to have the image at the top, maybe we'll drag this down a little bit more. I can let that represent my C. So take your time and go through each individual letter, recreating them out, and use as many or as few of these different shapes as possible until you've got the entire alphabet created. All right, once you've finished your entire alphabet, let's go up to File and Save. And the last portion of this exercise is to put your alphabet into use. I want to take each of the letters and form out the words Choctaw Jazz because I'm making a jazz poster that incorporates this letter design. So I'm going to scroll off to the right side of my alphabet template. Let's grab our artboard tool. And the size of our artboard really doesn't matter, so I'm just going to click and drag and create a custom sized artboard. Now you can change up the size of your board to be taller or wider depending on the design needs for your particular poster. But for mine, I'm going to keep it relatively square. So the next part, let's grab our black arrow selection tool. And then we need to simply copy over the required letters to spell out Choctaw Jazz. I'm going to hold down the Option key. And when I click and drag, this will automatically copy those letters. So there's a C, H, O. C, T, A, and a W, and then we need Jazz. 
There's the J. A. And we need two Zs for that. Now just placing them on here roughly, you get an idea of what it can look like. Let's take it to the next level and actually design out how these letters are going to interact. We'll start off with Choctaw. First, I do want to make sure it reads well with all of the letters interacting and being roughly the same weight and size. You can play around with the placement of it, so don't think you have to be locked into this particular set. Feel free to rotate, resize, and replace until you get something that, you're, that you like. I want it to feel like it's flowing like a good brush. Maybe bring that C down a bit. And we'll do the same thing for jazz. I want jazz to be nice and large down here below. So let's take the all the letters first and make them larger. Now, one thing that's kind of a pet peeve of mine is whenever I see two letters that are exactly the same in a design that's meant to look like it's spontaneous and hand-drawn. So for instance, whenever I see these two Zs right beside each other, I really want them to be slightly different because you would never draw a Z exactly the same uh, in both cases. So let's take this one. I'm going to customize this Z to fit better into this shape. So I'm going to select it, go up to Object, and ungroup and I want to change up the way these endings look so maybe I can simple as flipping that around and making it a little bit higher up this one I want it to bring it all the way over so I'm going to flip that one around too let's drag it out actually if I really wanted to get creative let's go over to our areas and let's choose just another kind of swatch I'll copy him paste him into here these are my letters and my design, so I can feel free to change it up however I see fit. You can too for your design. You don't have to be stuck with just using the letters that you have. That's looking a lot more better. Same way for the A that we have. This A and this A look exactly the same, so maybe I'll take this one and let's change up the way this particular leg looks. We'll go back over here. Let's get us another one. I like this one. We'll paste it in. That's already looking good. Now we can take those, start to center that up, and let that fit as well. Whoops, get everything. All right, with that, let's make it much larger. There's a black and white version of this. I can go back in and I can add color. I can play around with the placement and order of all of the different letters. This doesn't have to be my final design, but this is what I'm looking for. Take your design and use it to spell out the, the uh, words necessary for your poster's design. The final thing I want you to do is to resize this artboard to fit the, uh, the words a little bit better. So let's grab our artboard tool one more time. This time I'm going to bring it in until it has about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch on either side because there's no need to have so much room for it there. All right, with that done, everything on this project can be turned in in one Illustrator document. You've got your shapes, you've got your letters, and then finally you have your words. We'll go up to File and save this again. This Illustrator document is what you'll upload to Moodle once you finish this project.